you might get somebody that goes from U.S. side and goes over to Mexico and walks into a factory and they all day long, they dig underneath to try to get to that over there. Um, there's some very intricate tunnel tunnel systems that they've done. Man. Um, and I don't think the U.S. even fully knows how many tunnels there are. So also I have a Patreon account. Patreon is our, it's a subscription account. Yep. They are our top supporters. They've been here since the beginning. They're the reason I get to be here. My team's here. And they're the reason you get to be here too. And so- Well, thank you, Patreon. Yeah. And thank so you. one of the things I promise them is I offer them a opportunity to ask the guest a question before they come on. And so we got a couple of good ones here. This one's from Gregory Lauten. What is the most pressing, excuse me, what is the most pressing issue affecting law enforcement officers in Pinal County and throughout the state of Arizona? So I think it's the same thing, not just for Pinal County. I think it's not just the same thing for Arizona, but the entire country. And that is the border. And what, I know we're going to dive into the border a lot, but just give you the cliff notes of it. I think national, when we talk national security, the greatest threat to national security, the greatest threat to the undermining of the rule of law is beginning right at the open border situation, not holding people accountable, letting them come in here and break the law, then flooding our communities with unknown people. You know, the, the, the Border Patrol is vetting like 5% of those people. And so now these people, they don't, once they come across the border, they don't just stay on the border. They filter into communities like mine or in Arizona or across the country. And it creates a real challenge for us as law enforcement because the federal government allowed people, unvetted people to come into my community. And not only that, we're taking people from third worlds and expecting that we're not going to turn into a third world when we bring them into our communities. So the other piece to that is the fentanyl. Not just the drugs, but I think the fentanyl has become probably, I mean, methamphetamine is still a big issue in Arizona, mm -hmm. but the, fe the fentanyl poisonings that are going on in this country, and I know we're going to dive into that deeper, but when we talk about the pre most pressing matters, I think are they're all combined, national security, threats to American lives, threats to our communities. It's starting at the southern border. Well, we got to... You know, I hate diving into that, but I love diving into it because because it needs to be heard. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait to dive into that discussion because I just I don't know what to believe anymore. You know, I don't I don't believe really any media sources anymore. I think they're all over embellished. And uh, and so it'll be great to talk to somebody like you. You know, they're over embellished, they're under reporting and they're telling you the facts that they want you to want. They're telling you things. To, to spin it their way. Yeah. And look, I've been accused of that, but, but today I'll give you truth and then let people decide as to whether or not they, but I don't give you things that I, if I don't know it, I'm not gonna give it to you. I'm giving you things that I know because of being on the ground, the people I work with, the things that we see, that we talk to, all these things. So I, I think hopefully in the end, there's gonna be a lot of people listening today that you know are maybe for it or against it, you know, and I hope to just give more information, truth about it, and then people can make up their own mind as to the severity of the problem. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, re I really appreciate that. And the next question is from Lucas Carrion. Do you have any context behind the tunnel system that the cartel has built to funnel in drugs and potentially supporting a systematic attack against America with weaponry and high value targets relying on that infrastructure? Well, Lucas, great question. It's not just a single tunnel. It's many tunnels. Um, the cartels are, are flush with cash. They have the ability to to build all sorts of stuff. You see a lot of tunnels down in places like Nogales, Arizona. And the reason I mentioned Nogales, not that Nogales is, it's just that Nogales is right on the Mexico border. So on one side of Nogales is 50,000 residents or 30, 30 to 50,000 residents. And on the other side is 500,000 residents in Mexico. And literally you can have a house here or a business here a road of 15 feet, the wall, a 15 foot road and businesses right there again. So within 30, 40 feet, you have 
businesses or houses in Mexico as a, and businesses and houses in Arizona. And so a lot of times those tunnels will go from one factory in, in Mexico and then pop up in, in somebody's business or somebody's home on the U.S. side. There's also there, there's tunnels out in the middle of nowhere, too, in the deserts. But right now, the tunnels, they don't need to use them as much because the borders are wide open. Man. And so they're pushing people through more conventional routes as, throw, as opposed to the tunnels. But they still exist, and whenever they find them, they usually destroy them. How, do you have an estimation of how many tunnels there are maybe just in Arizona? I mean, it's always changing. I mean, I, look, I think that to, you probably got hundreds. I don't know. Hundreds of tunnels? I mean, you're, you're at least got... Uh, every cartel is going to have their own pieces of co- tunnels. Every, every smuggler within those cartels has their way of being able to smuggle the product. You remember, it's not like the cartel ushers these people down themselves. They have different smuggling units that work for the cartels. And those guys, well, the money they make is based on their ability to successfully smuggle drugs or people into this country. And so if you're going to make a ton of money, why would you not uh, put a a tunnel in place that would give you the best opportunity to smuggle people and drugs across the border so that you can make the most money. How are they digging these tunnels? By hand. How, how big are they? Can they uh, walk Some are very like, like some of you could take a railroad little box through, which They're they that do. that big. Um, most of them are built at least to where somebody, a grown man could walk in it. Um, they're probably not built to my height, but there are uh, many of them they're built they're fortified just like you would you go into a mine and you would see these tunnels and some of them are more rudimental some would be just you know like you could crawl through it and get to the other side do you have any any footage of this stuff no i mean there are there's plenty of footage from border patrol and stuff in my county we don't get the tunnels as much because i'm i'm not on the border i'm one county off the border okay so i'm 52 miles off the border where the um on the Indian Reservation, the Tano Dominion Nation, and then 71 miles off the border where the I-10, um, where the county line intersects with the I-10. And so what we've got is problems of them pushing them through backpackers, drugs, all that coming through the reservation predominantly. And then anything that comes across the southern border, pretty much everybody that comes through Cochise County, Pima County, Santa Cruz County, Those people eventually are gonna get in a car, whether it's the drugs or the people that are being trafficked, they're gonna get on one of of, of our highways and head up to Phoenix. And Phoenix becomes a distribution hub for human trafficking, drug trafficking. So they are never, almost all of them will make it through Pinal County at some point, either on our highways or through our deserts to try to get to Phoenix where they will be distributed throughout the rest of the country. Man, man, I just, I get, we're going to dive into this a lot yeah. more later, but I'm curious about these tunnels. How are they able to, you're saying they go from, from wherever in Mexico, right into a living room or, a, or some type of a business. How are they, how are they, uh, I mean, how are they locating that? They are good at it. <laughs> how are they able to navigate into that business you know a lot of it is just a compass you know you can just go with a compass underground and just look and see if you're still on the on the heading the right heading i guess Um, they would probably start in the u.s and go to mexico they start they do it both ways so they'll start in the mexico and a lot of these people you got to remember they can pass freely on day visas or some of these people can come back and forth and so you might get somebody that goes from u.s side and goes over to mexico and walks into a factory and they, all day long, they dig underneath to try to get to that over there. Um, there's some very intricate tunnel, tunnel systems that they've done. Man. Um, and I don't think the US even fully knows how many tunnels there are. Especially now we're so overwhelmed that you don't have time to dedicate to going and finding all these tunnels. And right now the cartels, like I said, they don't really even need to spend a lot of money building these, these tunnels because they're having so much success just walking them through the gaps in the fence. Yeah. Or, you know, or, or on the reservation where there's no wall. There's not a single foot of wall on the reservation. At best, it's, it's three strands of barbed wire fence or some Normandy barrier. That's it. That's it. Man. 
No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.